How's it going everybody? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your continued support over the last month or so with my irregular uploads and just not being active at all on any social media platform. If you all didn't know already, I have moved from England due to my old landlord kicking us out because he didn't want to repair our property. Uh, when I kicked off a fuss, he booted us out. We had nowhere to go and uh, the next logical step was to leave England forever. But as well as the extortionate petrol prices. I, I just cannot be bothered, it's just cheaper, that's simple. I have also mentioned in previous videos that just before I left the UK, I actually confronted a man who was messaging one of my underage accounts. Part one to that video will be out on the video after this. I'm sorry that couldn't be the video that went out today. We we're just sort of waiting for the last bits of lawyering to happen. I just need to make sure that everything that I'm going to post in that video is legally sound. My lawyers currently have a copy of it and they're just going through it as we speak. That process normally takes between 48 and 72 hours. And I, you know, have finally got my office set up here. So I thought I should probably um, make use out of it and record another video. I'd also like to give a massive shout out to everybody that supports my Patreon account. Without you, doing this as a job just wouldn't be possible. If you didn't know already, my entire YouTube channel, my Patreon, everything is non-profit. Everything that it generates through um, sponsorships or ad revenue or Patreon literally goes to paying for the lawyers that cost £250 an hour sometimes to people to message these people full time, petrol to go meet these people and all of that sort of stuff. It's a very expensive job, I guess, and I just wouldn't have the money out of my own pocket to be able to afford it. And I do really appreciate everything help. So without any further hesitation, let's get back into the video. Get back into the video, let's start the bloody video. So to start off the video, the person uploading this content has decided to place images of the alleged predator who they are about to confront within a superstore. This isn't a legal issue with the video, but personally, as a consumer of content, as your viewers are as well, as a storyline, it doesn't tell this story as well as it could. To tell a good story in the beginning, a middle, and an end, your conflict has to be in the middle, the resolution has to be at the end, and the setup has to be at the beginning. This isn't a setup to tell a story. A better setup would be putting the uh, text messages first. Let the viewers understand what's going on, get into the conflict or confronting the person, and then the resolution at the end of them getting arrested. That's the way that these stories should be told. Just because as a consumer, people who watch the videos will find that more interactive. They will be able to follow the storyline along and help them understand who this person is, why they're there, what they said, and all of this sort of stuff. Just a critique for you to help improve your channel, I guess. It's not a legal thing, uh, I don't mind providing some um, tips. Is it just me or is it sort of beautifully ironic that they're meeting a child predator down a sweet aisle? It just plays into that white van, oh, I've got some sweets kiddies sort of stereotype. I, I don't know why, it just sort of, <laughs> it just sort of fits the niche too well, doesn't it? So there's a couple of things in this small segment that people might have missed. Some good, some bad, and I sort of want to cover both. First of all, having two cameras and two means of recording one of these encounters is a great way of making sure that you can capture everything. If you only have a phone and somebody knocks it out of your hand, you can't prove beyond a reasonable doubt the sequence of things that happened afterwards if it's not caught on camera. So having a chest rig on with a GoPro, I guess, attached, prevents your camera equipment being damaged beyond the scope of being able to sort of record an encounter. Having two cameras is better than one. They've also brought a prop phone of which they are calling the person on to prove again, beyond a reasonable doubt, that whoever is about to answer that phone call is the one who engaged in the text conversations linked to that particular phone number. But this is where things have gone slightly wrong. They may not have noticed this, they may not have thought about it, and hopefully if they see this video they can um, post-edit this out. But they have included the phone number of this alleged predator within this recording. 
Depending on how legally sound they've made the rest of this video, for example, if the uh, text messages were legal, if the encounter was legal, and if they did go to the police and report this as a serious crime. If these things were not done, including the phone number is quite clearly doxing. If somebody doesn't go to the police and make a legal report when they are doing an investigation like this, it's quite easy for a predator to argue that it was maliciously intended or they were targeted and it's harassment. There's a lot of things that you can get sued for and this is why speaking to lawyers and making sure that you do everything legally is so important. So because they've released the phone number of this particular person, that's an identifying portion of content. It's like releasing an address, an email number, a full name with like middle names. It's, a phone number is a part of that and it is completely illegal to do so. And this one little slip up that they may not have noticed or may not have thought about can completely throw out a case. If this person receives even one text message relating to this video that says, oh, you're a blah, 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 the alleged predator could then argue that the person has maliciously released their details for the pure intent of people harassing them. And that would be very hard for the predator catcher to argue in court because they have released the phone number. This little thing can throw out an entire case and it's something that most people would have glanced over. Is your phone ringing? Do you want, you want to step outside and have a conversation? Or should I just call the police? It's up to you. I mean, this is almost Amber Heard level facial expressions. For this person to phone this alleged predator from the phone number that was engaging within these sexual conversations with what is seen to be a minor in the circumstance, added together with the fact that this person sent selfies, proves beyond a reasonable doubt that this is the person that was engaging in every piece of conversation throughout the entire chat log. It's very easy for people to argue that messages and stuff like that are fake, and a lot of messages can be faked. You've also got to take into account that they are at the same place that they said that they were going to meet this alleged child as well. So all of that tied in together is basically a slam dunk case. If this hadn't been uploaded on the internet prior to a police investigation and they took what has been uploaded now and gave it to the police, including conversations that engage within sexual conversations with a minor, this would be, without a doubt, completely taken seriously by the police and an arrest would have probably been made. We don't know yet if this person ever contacted the police. I have not seen the full video. Let's hope he has. But if he hasn't, this will never go to court because they have released the phone number and because they didn't go for the right protocols before releasing the video. What are you about? Who are you texting? Who just, who just called you? You want to have a conversation about it? Or should we just get the police involved? It's up to you. Well, who were you texting? If you couldn't hear that properly, she said, why would you get the police involved? And he's answered and he's asked the question about who you texted. It's quite obvious at this point that she was answering the phone to his phone call because not only are her photos involved within the text conversation, but I mean, she literally answered the phone and you got that on camera. You don't have to play these uh, who are you texting sort of games. I understand that a lot of people would want um, the admission of guilt to come exactly directly from this person, but because of the way she's acting and walking off, I don't believe that she would probably admit to you know, the crimes that she's clearly committed. A better approach of this would be to directly ask her why she was doing it, why she's here to meet a 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever the age is you're old, and that sort of nature, and wait for a verbal slip up or a Freudian slip to arrive where the person implements themselves within the crimes. The other thing I want to mention as well is the police should always be called. It shouldn't be, if you don't speak to me, I will call the police. Because again, when this goes to court, if it goes to court, followed with the phone number being released, followed with potential doxing because of that, and if the police are not called, if this person then files a report against the alleged child predator catcher, they can then argue that because the police were never called, this was targeted harassment and purely there to defame and destroy their lives, not to go through a criminal process. It just makes it so much harder and wastes so much time and money for everybody involved. Who did you come here to meet? So where are you going now? Why aren't you shopping? You, 
<laughs> what is your stuff at? Oh yes, the infamous drop my stuff off in the car and then walk back down to the sweet I will wait for a child excuse. I mean, <laughs> how many times have you been shopping in Tesco's, Macro, I don't know, Walmart, I don't know, the other big Sainsbury's and you've done your shopping, you've paid for your shopping, you've put it all in your car, including your, you know, frozen and fridge goods. And you go, do you know what? I want to relax. I don't fancy a coffee, I don't fancy sitting down, in fact, I don't even fancy driving back to my house to unpack my goods. I want to stand outside a sweet iron. Because that, it's just not a good excuse, is it? You, like, like, it's bizarre to me, the weird shit that people come out with when they are confronted with their own bullshit. It, it's crazy to me. So, you, took, you came in the shop, we can just call the police, I just want to talk. You know, I'm not, we're not going to hurt you or nothing. I just want to have a conversation about why you think it's okay to do this, and that's going to be the end of it. So do you want us to get your tag and call the police, or do you want to just have a quick conversation about it? I do want to mention here that I commend this person for not screaming at the top of his voice in a Walmart like the majority of people do. As you've seen on my channel before, where we reacted to a video where a... Uh, a man not involved within the legality or predator catching aspect of it, but overheard the conversation, came in and assaulted the alleged child predator. Doing stuff like that can make these people who are conducting these operations um, liable for damages and crimes committed by other people, especially when they could be seen as putting the alleged defendant in these cases at risk. So I do appreciate him for remaining calm and cordial and not shouting because it's it's a very hard um, trait to have when you're doing this. You're not going to say anything? Because I, I know your address and where you work. Well, that was... It just switched from anything? YouTube. Because I, I know your address and where you work. Why are we straightened? Oh, what's going on here? Why is it just going straight into TikTok? You're not going to say anything? Because I, I know your address and where you work. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to say it on, on the camera. I mean, do you want everyone to know where you work and where you live? I just want to have a conversation. That's all I want to do. From the way that he's answered this question, saying that he doesn't want to release the information of this alleged child predator within a video, proves to me that the including of the uh, phone number would have been an accident. And I hope that if they are referred to this video, that they can go back and edit that out. Because I know on YouTube, you can do post edits. And I'd highly recommend that in case they um, do get sued. The last thing I want is for child predators to get away with their crimes. That's why I make these videos and I try and educate somewhat as much as I can that there are legal ways to do this to make sure arrests are made so these people can't get away with their crimes, if that makes sense. And hopefully they take that tiny bit of criticism on board. Just, just find out why you think it's okay to do this. And that's it. We don't have to get police involved or anything. Yeah, well, that's a massive red flag. We don't have to get the police involved or anything. Yes, yes, you do have to get the police involved. The, the fact that you're not willing to get the police involved, it doesn't even sound like you're going to try. Like, no matter what your department say in your area, if they don't take you seriously, maybe you should look at why they don't take you seriously to start off with. Maybe it's mistakes that you're making that ruin cases and ruin investigations on these people. And this is why getting a lawyer is so bloody important. But regardless of what they say, it should still be reported. Because if this person has had other reports against their name, this can only aid a criminal case against them. Not reporting it and allowing this person to go home and potentially destroy evidence of other serious crimes that they may be committing, deleting terabytes worth of um, indecent images on hard drives. This is why it's important that the police are called. And there is no excuse to why there shouldn't be. And there's also no excuse as to why you don't have a VPN installed on your computer, phone, laptop, or tablet device. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Massive shout out to them for helping create this content and paying for the lawyers so these are legally sound. Surfshark is a VPN service. If you don't know what a VPN service is, it stands for Virtual Private Network. With a virtual private network, you can change your IP address, which is sort of like your online location, to anywhere in the world. This not only protects you from hackers 
and bad people like this person is alleged to be from finding your personal address and figuring out roughly where you live and where your children live. But it also comes with numerous other benefits like accessing Netflix and Amazon Prime in different countries. As mentioned before, I've recently moved to Southeast Asia and I can't watch the majority of the UK shows that I was watching on Netflix at the time. And without Surfshark, I'd be gutted because I'm really engrossed in a couple of these shows like Suits. I mean like season five of Suits, it's bloody amazing. It, it is not on Netflix in Thailand. I'm fuming. So without a VPN service, I'd be gutted. I use a VPN service whenever I message a child predator because it helps protect me and my family from this person figuring out who I am and where I live. And I'd highly recommend that you do the same to not only protect yourself, to protect your family, your children, your nieces and nephews. Maybe you are a young person yourself. You should have that protection. If you use the code FOX at checkout, you receive 83% off your order and an extra three months extra for free. Yes, because of me, you're only gonna have to pay 17% one seven of the total price that everyone else would have to pay. And in addition to that, you get three months for free. There's no excuse for why you should not download it right now. The link is in the description down below. Please check it out. It helps fund this channel. Does that sound fair? Does that sound like a deal? I mean, I'm not, I'm gonna keep it quiet. I'm not gonna be yelling at your business out to everybody, but I think you know what you came here to do is wrong and I think we should talk about it. The way that this person sees a child walk by and her head follows the child through to the store is a, another massive red flag to me. If you look at the angle of her head, it isn't up at where the father is, it's down at where the child is. And this man confronting a person who he has spoken to this entire time and he's willing to let this person go as long as she provides them some good YouTube content and speaks to him on camera. That's, that's not how this should work. It's never how this should work. And this is why the police don't take the majority of these cases seriously. You've got to remember that I've been doing this for two and a bit years now. And I built a relationship in England with the local police force that I worked with because every single time I provided them a case, I made sure that I did it to the team. Everything was done legally, everything was done easily, and when I handed it to them on an SD drive or USB stick, everything was laid out so all they had to do was review the evidence and hand it over to the crime unit. This is how it should be done, there's no excuse to not do this. Yes, you want to be an online vigilante, yes, you want that recognition for trying to do good in the world, but you're not doing good in the world just exposing these people to a couple of thousand people and allowing them to go back into society to ruin more lives. The best way to go about this will and always will be to go to the police. So that's how we step over there, away from everybody. You good? All right. I appreciate the offer to remove this person from what could be a dangerous situation to something that not a lot of people do. And the way he's actually conducting himself, apart from the uh, unwillingness to call the police and the um, accidental phone number leak, has been very good and with slight tweaks to the way that he does this, this might be one of the better predator catching groups I've seen. You wanna go ahead and call the police? Go ahead and call the police. Why are you counting to meet a 15 year old boy? I take that back. You shout here at the top, you just, oh my God. I understand, I, I, I completely understand why people do this because it's, it's so anger provoking being face to face with somebody who's done these crimes and you know they've done these crimes. You, they, they haven't been found guilty yet in a court of law, but you know because you're the one that carried the conversations that they are guilty. You know this and it is so frustrating, especially when they're acting like this and just storming off and acting like petulant children, ironically. It's so annoying, but you have to keep your cool. You have to keep on being professional. You can't start screaming because if something happens, you're liable. If you start screaming that and a, a father over here is down the road, like the one that just walked past, and he, let's say his daughter had a similar experience and he can't control his anger, and he goes over there and wallops her one or something like that, you're liable because you put her in a dangerous situation. I've seen cases before where people have been publicly embarrassed like this. They've gone home and they've um, unalived themselves. And the people who conducted these sting operations have actually been found guilty of manslaughter for 
aiding in that particular ending. So you want to make sure you do this legally. Don't let a good bit of work before this slip up because of a, a bit of anger. You come to meet 15 year old boys all the time? You're, I'm a freak, you came to meet a 15 year old boy. That sounds like a freak to me. I'm not sure how many of my particular catches that you guys have seen on this channel. Uh, I don't know who each individual viewer is. I don't know if this is the first time that you've seen me. I don't know if this is the third or the hundredth. But when I conduct these operations, I make sure that I try and diffuse a situation before it gets aggressive. If you act cordial and relaxed and somewhat what could be perceived as polite, these people will comply. They will stay. They will wait for the police because this is a safe place for them. They've been caught of this crime, but you're acting nice to them. They don't want to go somewhere else, but they might not be nice, if that makes sense. If you're acting angry towards them, they're more likely to leave. They're more likely to lash out. They're more likely to do something reckless. And that's the last thing you want. So I try to have a conversation, but your work is going to find out tomorrow morning. Notice how he says here that the work is gonna find out tomorrow morning and not the police are going to find out tonight or tomorrow morning. If this was actually done and the workplace were alerted before the police, that including with the number plate, the phone number, the shouting outside a superstore and the unwillingness to call the police, put together can easily be shown as targeted harassment, especially if this person was messaged first. We'll get into the messages in a second, I think. This will basically make this man liable for numerous crimes that he would have committed. Doxing, targeted harassment, defamation, and all of this just because the police were not called before a video was released or before other people were informed. He has two phones here. He's got a chest cam on. He could use one of those phones to call the police while he's still filming. He could have two cameras on and still call the police. He's got no excuse to why this wasn't done. Sad shit out here, man. Stop meeting children on the internet! Let's say that this person is involved heavily in a organization where they exchange indecent images. This happens uh, too much with the people that are caught within these videos. They can go home. They can delete all that evidence. They can block all the people that they were actually messaging who were real underage children and stop them being safeguarded. They can inform their friends that this fake account that they're using is fake if that particular person, it, just in case their friend was also trying to message this account. Like everything can go tits up because of this. If the police come to this situation, they arrest this person, they confiscate their items, they then have the ability to download any information from their PC, laptop, etc., etc., that they bring with them that may be, you know, implementary of another crime. Allowing them to go home and delete evidence is not a way to go about this. <clears throat> that was that guy's, I guess, didn't want to have a talk. Came in the shop, but had already took her stuff out to the car, and then she was just chilling back inside by herself in the middle of the aisle. So. I mean, the excuses they come up with. Ah, he isn't filming on two phones. He's live streaming on one phone and he's filming on the GoPro for YouTube. So in front of a thousand plus people audience, let's say he's released a phone number on a live stream. He's released a number plate on a live stream. He's released a location of where this is on a live stream and he's refused to call the police on a live stream. Again, in the car on the way home, this person is bound to receive hundreds of messages and phone calls from people who saw the phone number on that WhatsApp chat log. Yes, it may be deserved, but it's proof of doxing and it's proof of harassment and the entire case is in the bin because of it. As you can see, the alleged predator did actually message first, which I much appreciate.
she says in the chat box, this is illegal, but you're hot. And she still goes forward with meeting this person, which means that she was alerted of the age. She knew beyond a reasonable doubt her actions were illegal. And she still followed through with not only soliciting photos, but trying to meet this person for what I can only assume was a, a bedroom experience. If you had not live streamed this, if you had not released a phone number, if you had not released a number plate, if those three things were not included and the police were called, this would have been a slam dunk. This would have been an arrest. This would have been a court hearing. This would have been a f sentence. And you threw it all away because you wanted a little bit more content for YouTube. It, it frustrates me because people like this have no place in society. It, it frustrates me because people like this are going to get away with their crimes because you gave them the option to. That's not fair. It's not fair on anyone.